Hello and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. My name is Ricardo Silva. Today I'm going to be modeling a coffee mug and uh, you probably have heard me saying that uh, there is no right or wrong ways of uh, modeling objects and this is a perfect example of that. In here I, I propose a, to model a coffee mug in three different methods. Those methods are going to be able uh, to uh, let us do this uh, coffee mug the way that it, it should look at the end. And those methods are the ones that I'm suggesting. Uh, one is the loft, the other one is uh, using polygons, and the other one is uh, also using a uh, lathe uh, object. So let me show you uh, how those solutions are going to be possible in Cinema 4D. So here in Cinema 4D, uh, we have seen that uh, creating a loft object, it's uh, pretty simple. If I go to its icon where it says loft, we know that we're going to need several uh, splines. As you can see here in its icon, it shows uh, some splines, meaning that when you apply the loft to a uh, spline objects basically creates a three-dimensional uh, surface that goes from one curve to the other. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the loft first. And by itself it doesn't do anything, of course. So we're going to go and uh, create uh, my base for my cup. So I'm going to just place it in there. And as you can see, it's a little too large. So I'm just going to make it maybe 30 centimeters. And of course, it's facing in the wrong direction because I'm not going to make the coffee mug uh, facing that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, in the circle uh, parameters here where it says object, I'm going to change the plane instead of XY to be XZ. That way I can have the actual orientation of my curve facing in the right direction. Now, just with that one curve, what would happen if I place that inside the loft? It basically creates an object that is kind of like a, like a disk. It has a polygon and it is renderable, so if I render, I get that. But of course, that is not the purpose of the using the loft at this moment. So what I'm going to do is select the circle and inside here in my canvas or in my viewport, I'm going to press the control key and hold it while I use the, the Y axis, the green axis here, and drag. By dragging, I'm basically creating another copy of that same circle. So notice here in the object manager, I just created circle.1. That is a copy, an exact same replica of the circle that we created in the beginning. If I disable the loft, I will see that indeed I have two of those elements here in my uh, viewport. Okay, so with that in mind, that means that I can actually take the second circle and move it all the way to where I want the end of the coffee mug. And because I want that diameter to be a little larger than the base of the uh, coffee mug, then I'm going to change that. 30 to let's say 40. So not too big, but not too small. And maybe this the distance between those two is not quite what I need. So that looks fine to me. And then I'm going to enable the loft objects to see how it looks. So it looks just like a styrofoam cup, but without the holes in there. Okay, so far, so good. Now I need to create a little curve in here instead of a straight line. So that means that if I understand the loft correctly, I would need another spline here in the middle. So if I look at my object in here, my object manager, I have the bottom circle and then the top circle. If you want to rename this so you don't get confused, I'm going to do that so for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going to create that as the bottom circle. And then this guy is going to be the top circle. Now I'm going to need a middle or center circle. That means that if I create or if I take that top circle, either on my uh, perspective window or here in the object manager, I can copy it in either of those two places. 
I'm going to have to place it in between those two guys. So I'm going to take the top circle, press the control key, drag it until I see the arrow pointing left and then let go. I'm going to name that middle circle. Now that I have that, I, I can see the logic, bottom, middle, and top. But of course, the middle is still in the same place as the top. So I'm going to move it here in my perspective window to the center, to the middle. I'm going to enable the loft, and then I achieved that curve, as you can see. So the loft is working, that it goes from this circle to the middle circle to the top circle. Now, because my cup has a hole inside there, that means I need another top circle, but smaller. Okay, so I could, like I said before, I could copy it in here in my uh, perspective window, or I can do it here in my objects manager. I'm going to go ahead and do it in my objects manager, but by looking at the sequence of how the loft is going from one to the other, that means my smaller top circle needs to be next or after the top circle, that is the end of the initial uh, object that I'm creating there. So top circle, and I'm going to put a small. By doing that, then I go to my parameters of that one, and I'm going to say 38 instead of 40. So I can see that I created that nice rim. And if I enable the loft, I'm not going to see any change except Maybe a little bump in there. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to disable that again. So I'm creating or modeling that surface little by little. So if I continue with the logic of the sequence of the order that this is being created, that means I'm going to need a another middle circle, smaller, but after the two top circles. So I'm going to create a middle circle, control key, drag, until I see the left arrow under the top circle small. So that way, if it is out of the hierarchy like mine, I'm just going to put it back in there. So middle circle, that's a copy, and I'm going to call it small. Now that circle is in the same exact location as the middle circle, so I'm going to put this one 38 again. If I enable the loft, now I start to see that indeed the surface is actually wrapping around and it's not yet to the bottom because I haven't created another uh, circle at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and create another circle at the bottom. So following the same logic in, in here, the bottom circle, that's the one I need, but I need it after the middle circle small. As you can see, I'm following the logic. So control key, Click and drag until I see that arrow. Perfect. So bottom circle, and I'm going to call it small. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I disable this the loft so I can probably move it a little bit higher. You know, I want to add some thickness to it. And instead of 30, I'm going to make it 28. Okay. So by doing that, now I enable the loft and let's take a look inside. Perfect. Okay. So I have something very nice in there. Now, I, if you want to, you know, work on, on the interior of this uh, cup a little more, then that means you're going to add maybe another circle that is smaller. Let's do that for the sake of this tutorial so we can see that we're going to be actually uh, doing something to the end. Instead of being so sharp like that, I want to make it round, okay? So that is the idea. So by doing a, another copy of that same element here in my object manager, so control, drag, left arrow, so small, and I'm going to call it smaller. Okay, so by calling it smaller, I'm going to make it, let's say, uh, 15. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to enable the loft again. I'm going to look inside. So now I created something that looks 
like that. It's not what exactly what I wanted. That means that I have a sharp corner at the end down there. And that is because this element, the circle small, that is this one over here. Let me see if I can highlight it. Okay. This one over here is probably too close to the bottom. So I'm going to just lift it up a little bit and maybe make it a little smaller, maybe like 26. Okay. And enable the loft. And then I, I got that over there. Perfect. Okay. So I achieved that curve. Now the one in the center, the smaller, maybe it's a little too big. So I'm going to make it, let's say one centimeter instead, or even zero. Actually three, let's see, something like that. Okay. So I can bring it up or down until I get that roundness that I'm looking for. Okay. Now this one corner in the exterior of the cup is sharp because that is the final or the initial curve that we created, which is the bottom circle. That bottom circle, if I move it up or down, is going to change the geometry. But what I need is basically create another bottom circle next to it. So if I follow the logic that the, the surface is being created from here to here to here to here, blah, 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 something like that. And then at the end, this one connects to this one again. That's why we get that continuity of surface. That means that I might need another bottom circle, but on top of that one. So control, drag, until I get that. So bottom circle, small. Okay, let me turn off the loft so we can see what we're doing. And because the bottom circle is small, I'm going to make it, let's say, 10. Okay, so as you can see, it's in the same exact position as the bottom circle, but then it's smaller. So if I enable this, now I achieve that roundness that I'm looking for, that I was looking for. Okay. So, okay, so maybe the shape is not exactly what I wanted. That means that uh, I, uh, for example, here in the top circle, the one, the two top circles that I have in there, maybe I want them to be smaller. That's fine. I select both of them, go to my scale tool and scale them both so I can control the size of that. Maybe the one that is in the middle, not only the one in the middle, the outer, but also the middle in the inside. Maybe I want to move them up or down so I can control where the curve is. Okay. If I enlarge that, notice that I can change the shape of that element. Okay. Because I'm actually tweaking both of those elements at the same time. If I were to tweak only the outer part, okay, the interior is going to be the same thickness, as you can see, right? So I'm creating kind of like a surface that is thicker on the, in the center of the cup and then thinner at the edges. But that's not exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm just going to leave something like that and select the two middle circles and make sure that I have something like so. And then, of course, the ones at the bottom, they are a little too, too big, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, Make change the size. So now I am trying to get the shape that I want. All right. Now, if I feel that like my cup is a little too short, you know, then I can take the top circles right here and basically move them up a little bit, something like that. So it's nice and slick. Okay. And the same thing with the middle ones. Okay. Up or down, whatever, something like that. Perfect. So now I achieve the beginning of my cup that I want to model later on and put the little uh, handle in there later on. But so far, so good. If I look at the display, the second option, grass shading lines, then I can see what kind of polygons I have obtained out of those uh, splines that I have there. So just by doing that, I created the first version of the cup.
In the next tutorials, I will show you how I create the other types of cups.